Welcome. This is Documentation Office Hours. It's the 6th of June, 2024. Today, we've got a number of topics. Weekly build, require Java 17, Jetty 12, Jetty 12 EE9, uh, LTS update. We can talk briefly about version docs. If Chris joins us, we'll talk more in depth. Uh, GSOC is on my list, but we may skip it. Contributor Spotlight is on my list, and I've got an additional suggestion, and then Blue Ocean Deprecation Project. Anything else that we need to discuss today? Um, nothing on my side. Thank you, Mark. Okay. So, FYI, 2.461 was built and delivered. The changelog was merged. Big thing that's coming is that Jenkins Weekly, beginning June 18th, so two weeks from now, a little less than two weeks, will require Java 17. Basil Crow is going to do a blog post that announces it. The We've got agreement that the next LTS baseline will be either, will be before June 18, 2024. So, We'll choose an LTS baseline that is not that one because the next LTS line will still support Java 11. We won't turn off Java 11 support until, so Java 11 support in LTS ends October 30th, 2024 with that new LTS at the end of October. Any questions there, Basel? Uh, Basil is not there, but oh, uh, sorry, Bruno, I used <laughs> no the wrong problem. name. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah, no, yes, no question. No, just a comment. Uh, some people um, may have been overwhelmed by your first sentences about, oh, we'll choose uh, something uh, maybe around uh, GDK 17. And then suddenly you told us that the next LTS line would support Java 11 still. So <sighs> I okay, guess some people yes. will be relieved at that time. Yes, right. So, <laughs> so June. July, August, mm -hmm. September uh, releases all continue to support Java 11. And there will actually be one at the very beginning of October that will support Java 11. October 30th yep. really yep. is the concluding. October 30th is the new line. It will be a dot one and it will drop Java Java 11 support. Oh, oh, but I've got to I've got to embed a picture actually to show you why that is perfectly healthy. Oh, uh, the next from uh, Basil, he has ex automated. Yes. Exactly. That Brilliant. is a, that is a great picture to show and I've got it somewhere else. So I'm going to going to take just a moment and go find it. Yes. And while you search for it, uh, let me emphasize that uh, please do not procrastinate. Of course, October 30, uh, you have until then to um, uh, modify your processes and run with uh, JDK 17. But October th uh, 30 is just after the summer break and not so much may be done in your company or in your open source project during summer. So please, please think of it now and put out a roadmap or something. You'll have to... Uh, migrate to JDK 17 uh, before the end of the year. So take it into account, please. Very good. Yeah. So, so the the picture is, oh, it's okay. I'm looking at the wrong place. There we go. Here's the picture. Drag it onto my screen. This is from the Jenkins CI JVM graph repository. What we see here is that Java 8 peaked in about 2020 with our usage J 20 java 11 usage peaked in about mid 2022 maybe to early 2023 and the slope the climbing of java 17 is very nicely we're rapidly approaching a hundred thousand controllers already on java 17 with another roughly five months to go four months to go before we hit that end, we hope that this line will continue its nice steep decrease. And thanks to Basel for, to, for providing that update tool. 
see the JVM graph for latest data. It now updates uh, once a week. Yeah, super cool. Great, excellent. All right, so the next part, that's the, the we know when it's going to happen. The next step after that is Jenkins will switch from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12 EE8, so Java Enterprise Edition 8. And that switch, we're not sure when it's going to happen because there are three blocking issues in Jenkins that need to be investigated and resolved before we make the switch. And we've not seen any adoption or any traction on any of those three issues from anybody. So I hope to work on one of them, but invite others to help. What you have to do is you explore and deep dive those to see why does why has Jetty changed its behavior in each of these cases. The tests currently pass, even on Jetty 12, but they pass because a special change has been inserted. And we need to understand why that change was necessary. So these are each need some deep dive to understand what's going on inside Jetty 12. It may be that what Jetty 12 is doing is exactly what we want. And if so, then we put a comment that way in the in the the bug and we're fine. If it's not, then we need to understand why the Jetty 12 behavior changed and if we need to change something in Jenkins to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. The next piece is Jetty 12 EE8 to Jetty 12 EE9. This is moving from Java X dot servlet, whoops, from servlet to Jakarta dot servlet. And that change is very large. Um, it's actually in progress very nicely. Uh, and Bruno has created a sample that builds a prototype, builds the a Docker container with the prototype inside. And I am proud to say I just got it running, Bruno, with really? your prototype. Oh. Yes, absolutely. So just That's before cool. this meeting, Mark has it running uh, and it it works. Right. So now what's needed here, though, is needs lots of exploratory testing. Yeah. What we're looking for is because of the change and the way that we've that Buzzles had to implement compatibility layers, um, watch for any form that accepts data, but then does not retain it. Mm -hmm on the next time the next time it's opened yeah also watch for stack traces in the console output meaning in the jenkins log output and looks very promising it's it's looking really really good actually i've been running it for about 2 weeks without without any problem wow. but others are encouraged to help any questions there bruno no no question just a comment uh it's not much what i've provided today it's relies entirely on basil's work and your insight uh that, that's not much but that could help people that would like to test without breaking anything on their machine just a docker compose up uh, command and then you're Good to go. You can test without changing anything to to your machine. So that's convenient. If ever somebody would like to test, by the way, exactly. I don't think you will find anyone. I've I've got to show the command I use. So I did this. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So this is all it took for me. So I cloned the repository. Where is it? So where but, is it? Um, sorry, I've just got a question. Why are you using the build Docker Compose and not the Docker Compose itself? Just because you wanted to rebuild it on your machine? I wanted have... to be sure. Well, when I tried uh -huh. to run it initially, it didn't seem like it was rebuilding, so I wanted to rebuild it myself. So check out the Quick Start Tutorials repository. 
I have put the link in the chat just in case. Yeah, here it is. I got it right here. So check out the Spring Security Branch. And then I built, Mark built his own. Mm, why not? With this command. And that was here. Yeah. And okay. you can can use already built version. Yeah, if you trust with me, but... <laughs> the same thing without the build Docker Compose, but Docker Compose. Right. Now what I had to do, the one of the surprises for me is I I, I had existing volumes from a previous previous use oh. and I had to go clean up my volumes. Don't forget to remove the so yeah, it would be the same command instead of up you put down minus V minus minus remove orphans. Oh, oh, okay. Thing. All right. So that's that let's put that as a stop the experiment with tell me that again, bro. Down. I put it in the chat if I'm not mistaken. Okay, down and okay, you say it's in the uh... Yeah. Good. So let me grab it from there. Okay. No, that wasn't it. I need to grab ah this one. Okay. Minus V minus minus remove orphans. All right. Like that. Yep. Excellent. Good. I just have to remove to remember to remove orphans. Very good. So thanks again for doing that, Bruno. Great, You're welcome. my pleasure. That was great fun. story and and a, a, a nice way to borrow from the Quick Start Tutorials project for other uses. Yeah. When your only tool is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. When when there are lots of nails all around you, you need to hammer a lot. Yes, both <laughs> both both comments apply. All right. Excellent. So anything else on the Jetty 12 EE8 to Jetty 12 EE9 topic? No, except a big thank you uh, <laughs> to Basil and uh, Adrian. Yes, absolutely. Very good. All right, next topic then is we've got an upcoming LTS middle of next week, June 12th, a little less than seven days from now. And Chris Stern is release lead. I have the action item to provide a backporting pull request for two issues. One of them is to silence security scanners. We don't like it when security scanners waste our time by telling us, oh, you've got this outdated dependency. And the other is a Safari fix. Uh, Kevin Kevin Martins has created the change log and upgrade guide. I think it needs to be reviewed and merged. So that I hope will happen today. Any questions there, Bruno? No, thank you, Mark. All right. On the version docs project, I don't have anything extra to add, so I'm prone to just remove it from the, the agenda unchanged from last time. Anything you want to share, Bruno, on Google Summer of Code? Uh, not so much. In fact, the coding period has started. We're done with the bonding period. Uh, most of the students still have exams uh, these weeks, so they are not 100% uh, uh, up to the tax yet, but next week or so, we should be at full steam. And for the time being, there is no blocker whatsoever. Everyone is progressing at its own pace. And things look good. Uh, we have an important milestone, July the 11th, if I'm not mistaken. That's a midterm mm -hmm. um, presentations. But um, yeah, people are using GitHub, uh, GitHub projects, uh, lots of different uh, communication channels. Uh, everyone is starting to um, communicate with each other, find the right way to work together. And that's a, a joy uh, to be seen, in fact, seeing something grow. And yes, we are all drawing together the mentees, the mentor, the admins. We are all learning from this GSOC experience. So that's 
pretty beneficial to the projects and to the people, to the team. Thank you. Thanks very much. Next topic is Contributor Spotlight, and Jan Faracek's Spotlight is live. Thanks to Jan. Much appreciated for the many things he does for the Jenkins project and its user interface improvements. The, he's been a great force for good. Alyssa Tong is next. Rajiv Singh has been su suggested in addition to Harsh Pratap Singh, Vandit Singh, and Michelle Martineau. Michelle, I'm not sure she's going to say yes, ultimately had a conversation with her and she's not sure she's got enough of interest. Darren Pope is one I would add. Darren has been a great contributor and we haven't done a spotlight on him yet. And thanks to Kevin for his work that he's doing there. Now we've got a new feature. Bruno, maybe you want to introduce this feature to everybody? Oh, uh, it's not done yet as okay. far as I know, but it's in the making, in fact. Uh, Jean-Marc Mason has been producing lots and lots of data related to our contributors, how much time they spend, uh, how much time we've been having them, how many contribution, contribution they have made in the last month, year, or so, and so on. And now that we have all that data, uh, we decided to extract randomly a contributor that helped us the previous month and display the name and a big thank you in the um, Contributor Spotlight website. So each and every morning, we generate a new uh, CSV file that Chris will uh, use to generate a portion of HTML. So yeah, randomly, if you're a Jenkins contributor, you may see your name one of these days on the Contributor Spotlight website. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's I like how they do it here. Let's let's look at this one because the the Tamarin people have done it. Let's see who it is. Thank you, Steelhead Thirty One, for ten contributions to API. So really, a, a, an elegant elegant thing. I refresh the page, I get a different one. So. So it's a nice way of saying, hey, thanks very much for your contributions. But for us, it will be slightly different. Uh, a refresh mm -hmm. won't change anything as far as I know. It's just one different contributor per day. Which suits me just fine. Having okay. static websites, I like much better than dynamically. <laughs> so that's, that's good. Okay. All right. Anything else on Contributor Spotlight? No, thank you, Mark. Okay, the Blue Ocean Deprecation Project, I don't have anything to add there. Kevin continues to work on it. We'll just carry it forward. And a reminder that Doc's Office Hours Asia will happen to, in about you know, a little less than 10 hours. Uh, first time in three or four weeks since I've been gone. Thanks, everybody. Any other topics, Bruno, before we end? No, nothing, Mark. Thank you. All right. Thanks a bunch. Recording will be available in about 24 hours.